This is an entire region of British Columbia that I never really knew existed. It's incredibly beautiful, but what has made exploring here so great has been the hospitality of the locals. I want to give a great big thank you to the Taltan people for being so welcoming. I was given permission to camp down here at one of the fish camps. This is actually the location of their annual music festival, which I bet would be an absolute riot in the summertime. In behind me is the stage where the musicians can perform, and surrounding that are all of the fish camp cabins. It is situated right beside the beautiful Stikine River. And before we leave the area, there's actually one more ghost town here that I want to explore. Then, we're heading north. It's 15 or 20 minutes, but there's a couple spots that are just beautiful. We'll stop here for a bit of a view. The GoPro is just not going to capture how nice this actually is. And it's pretty late in the season, almost all the leaves have fallen now. But imagine when all these were yellow. And over there, beautiful. Absolutely spectacular. Let's go to town. chance to explore dry town yet so I'm looking forward to it first of all don't know why it's called dry town I asked in both my interviews and and nobody knows and unfortunately a good percentage of it has been lost to wildfire but I think there's gonna be something over there still to see and that's the road you can see off in the distance to get over there That's where the ships used to dock, right down there. And several years ago, they said they were gonna rebuild it. So they totally destroyed it, built it, built about half of it, and then quit. <laughs> now it's totally not usable, can't even launch a boat there. The locals are not so happy about that. This is not nearly as far as I thought. <laughs> if this is in fact dry town, You gotta imagine though, if a fire came through here, or when the fire came through here, it would have burnt everything up so fast. So steep going up, would have just <laughs> roasted it. I think I know what this is. I think this is the foot section on the back of a tricycle. Interesting. I think many of you are aware that I have my internet via Starlink, but unfortunately my cable's been messing up a lot lately. I need a replacement and I can't get one out here. So my ability to research has been hindered down to just what I can learn from interviews. And in this particular situation, my interviewees did not know about Dry Town. Well, not the history anyways. Which is okay. Looking forward to doing a little research when I'm back in service anyways.
even poking around where nothing's left is still pretty interesting. You can see the whole foundation of a place here. Would you look at that? I wonder if that's a, a well. That's one thing here in Canada. We really don't have much for old rock work. Nothing like what you see in Europe. So when you run across some masonry work, I always find it very interesting. It's also not the first time I've made that statement. And I'll see people in the comments section that say, we have lots of rock work in Canada. You should go to Europe. Is this an old Suburban? Whatever it is, it's awfully radical. I'll tell you that much. There's a little bit of old town stuff left here. That's nailed onto the wall. How cool is that though? That's the front of an old box, I think. Pretty nice view. Back in the day, Everyone's garbage can was the window. You turf your stuff out and it tumbles down to the garbage <laughs> being outside. First of all, like that rock wall. But I seen down here a bunch of cans. Spork. I always thought that was a combination of a spoon and a fork. I don't see much of interest. That's kind of cool though. I did not realize that Heinz made orange juice. Not much of interest here, but there is a jaw from a cow. That's kind of fun. And look at this, found an old piece of pottery, the lid off of something. What makes it neat is there's a face in it. Yeah, classic case of George Washington right there. One more interesting dump find. Look at this thing. It's got a dog in it, like pressed right into the metal. Two dogs actually. Haven't the slightest idea what that would be from. Two cars here. Chrome's holding up great. Quite the difference from those cars that we saw on Haida Gwaii. If nothing else, this is just a beautiful place to hike around. Did find something here. This is not a, what the heck is this thing? Made a fun little find here. <laughs> I spent like 10 minutes. I thought this was a hatch going down into something. Spent about 10 minutes trying to figure out how to open that door and then realize it's just a chunk of wall that's fallen over. <laughs> but look at this old trunk. 
I don't want to touch it because it's just totally falling apart, but all the pieces are still there. Pretty cool. You could actually salvage the tin off of that and then build a neat little wood trunk if you wanted to. I'm gonna leave her. I wonder if this used to be a uh, boardwalk going along here. The locals here have been incredibly kind and welcoming. Had some great chats with folks off camera that were born and raised here and grew up here when it was still a bustling town. And there used to be a trough that came out of Telegraph Creek then ran all the way to Dry Town, supplied water over here. I'm assuming it was wood, so it would have been all burnt up in the fire. There's no sign of a town anymore, but this trail continues along, so just gonna hike it for a little bit, see where she goes. Definitely was something over here. I think that's just a fish camp cabin, but there's an old car here and <laughs> there's an old car way up there. How did that thing get there? Not sure what that thing is. This rock work in here is definitely man-made. But this doesn't date back all that far. Probably just for drying salmon. Here's a neat one. It's a 45 gallon drum built into a wood stove. Damper's broken. <laughs> Cute little pot there. Looks like an old tram over here. Or a fully functional tramway. Look at this thing! Oh! If you're a long time viewer, in fact, the longest time viewer, <laughs> you'll remember adventure number one. I built a cable crosser unit out of old skateboard wheels and aluminum road signs, and I crossed a cable to an island on the Fraser River. That was a radical adventure. Unfortunately, everything on that island was burnt up in a wildfire. But I wish I had the ability to build something like that here. I'd love to get across this thing. I've heard some stories as to what the buildings are that you can see on the other side. Kind of interesting history there, not something that I feel I have the right to share on the channel. But I spied something here. Look at this. It's the old cable car sitting down here in the trees. It's a real shame to see it just sitting here. I mean, this old iron, there's nothing wrong with it. Could throw this baby on and cross that cable right now. I mean, this thing <laughs> weighs a lot, so it's not something I'm gonna be doing by myself. Pretty awesome though. I spied that thing just as I was about to leave. This is the end of the trail here, so I'm guessing it comes over here just for this. But I wonder why they have this modern cable car now. Maybe to get to the other side for hunting. But I did see some stuff over there when I was flying the drone for the previous video. Let's uh, do some drone and check it out.
pretty neat little town site over there actually. It's too bad it's so sunny today. But one thing we can take a look at is the car over there. I do admire old vehicles, but I don't know them very well. Can't tell what kind of car that is, but it's a pretty rad car. Just imagine, one minute your mid-beer run, next minute, mid-air. You seen Dry Town? You seen Regular Town? Might be about time to make our way out of here. Wanted to make a stop on the way down and take a closer look at this rock work. Tremendous amount of work into this for something that's purpose has been completely forgotten today. Bottom of a desk, I think. Huh. We missed this one down here on the way in. And there looks like some really neat equipment just up here. There's a bunch of heavy equipment stuff here. Looks like an injection pump. I don't know, all sorts of stuff. Maybe this was a shop at some point. There's a whole track from a cat sitting here. Well, I wonder if this came out of the museum. Just found a radical old hat from the RCMP, Telegraph Creek. It doesn't look like it's been out here for super long, so I'll go leave it by Mickey's door. But look at this thing. No idea what this is. Pretty radical old tractor. <laughs> it's got instructions on it. Very cool. The tracks over there are much too large for something like this. Never seen one so small. We've been fortunate to enjoy actually a very mild fall this year. For the past week it hasn't even been getting below zero at night. But I definitely want to make sure I'm on the other side of those big nasty hills before the snow comes, which could be any day. So next week we're northbound. We got to see some incredible country while we're here. Thanks for watching everybody. As always, take nothing but pictures, leave nothing but footprints, and I'll catch you on the next one. Like a loaded gun Cause I knew you'd shoot me